Tom here from Orange Systems, and we're going to talk about packet sniffing with Unify access points. Unify was nice enough to put TCP dump in each of their access points, or at least every one I've tested, including from the in wall, the base station, the nanos, etc. And TCP dump is a way you can grab a network interface and pull all the data, dump it into TCP dump, get all the packets that are in there. But I wanna show you how to do it from your computer and then pipe it into Wireshark directly so you can get real-time packet capture off of an access point. Why would you do such a thing? Well, my first answer is why not? Second answer is this is very practical when you're trying to troubleshoot connectivity issues and trying to figure out what traffic is being passed between, for example, the firewall or the gateway and the device itself to try to sort out some of the issues such as where's DHCP coming from or where is it failing at? Before we dive into the details of how to set this up, let's first. If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. Now the first thing we need to do is enable SSH. So we go over here to settings, Scroll down and there's the box to enable SSH authentication and it gives you the option to adding an SSH key. This allows you to do passwordless login. I've got a whole video on SSH keys. Now go back over to here to our devices and we got to pick the device we're going to log in to. And I'm going to choose this Unify Nano, which is at 192.168.3.41. First step, can we log into it? So we'll go Thomas at 192.168.3.41. Great, I can log into it. And TCP dump, you can check it's right here and then you can specify the interface. But how do you know which interface to use? That's actually pretty simple. All the Unifies I've tried this on and I've tried it on quite a few of them, all have, well, a lot of interfaces, but you go all the way up usually and depending on the way it's ordered when it's dumped out and look for the BR0 interface. That is the bridge interface that ties all the other interfaces that get built inside of the Unify access points together. Now, if, quick side note, if you're asking if this will work on a switch, not to my knowledge, I'm not sure any way to do this on their switches. They don't work in the same way as the access points. But once you find BR0, you'll actually also find at BR0, the IP address assigned to the device. Next, you're gonna see dot in a 150 and 69, those actually represent VLANs. So you may not have the same VLAN numbers as me, or maybe you do, but this is how you can specifically get onto a one individual VLAN that you've created. So when you create an SSID and you tie it to a VLAN, it creates BR0 dot that VLAN tag. So we're gonna do 100 because that's the demo network we have. I'm gonna connect my phone to it shortly. So that's where we're gonna start. Now, if you started at connecting at BR0 so you can get everything, well, you get everything, but you also have to do something else. And so let's go ahead and exit out of this and look at the actual command we're gonna run here. And that's this right here. If you do Wireshark minus K minus I SSH Thomas 3.41 port 22 TCP dump interface BR0 dot 100, but if we didn't have the dot 100, we'd have to do what I'm gonna show you later in the tutorial here down here. When you're connecting, it will also, Wireshark, if you grab the root of it, the BR0, and start showing all the traffic from your connection to the device as well. You kind of want to eliminate that particular traffic because it's redundant. You don't need your traffic going to it. I, that's kind of watching things in a loop. So you say things like host not, and then you put the IP address, and we'll get to that later in the tutorial. But you can also say host and then an IP address, and that will filter for specifically that IP address. But let's go ahead and do it right here. We're gonna Wireshark and attach to this particular network, and then we'll attach something to the network and see what happens. So just run the command, let's uh, exit out of this. All right, now it's monitoring this particular VLAN. And there's nothing on it right now. It's uh, Like I said, it's empty, that's why I chose it because I didn't want a bunch of noise on there. Now I'm gonna attach my phone to it. So we'll go to my phone and we're just gonna switch over to this particular network and attach it. And right away, my phone's making some noise. Now, 
first thing let's look at is DHCP because it's a popular thing that people have to troubleshoot. And let's look at the offer request and we can see that it was answered. So DHCP, enter, so we filter for it. There we go. Here is the discover, discover, and then offer accepted. And you're going back and forth and now we can see that yes, it acknowledged and has that IP address. So you can go through and start troubleshooting things. Now let's switch to a different network that has things like the Chromecast on it because there's another popular thing that people may want to do some troubleshooting on. So we're going to go ahead and stop and quit without saving. So I don't really want to save the packet, but I could, you can save that capture. So go back over here, unify Wireshark. And don't worry, I'll leave the command linked below. Insert 69 and VLAN 69 is a network that has a Chromecast on it. So we're going to do that and then we'll take my phone attached to it. The Chromecast, which is actually on the TV behind me, is attached to it and we'll follow through what happens with the Chromecast and start watching the traffic from there. So we swapped it over here. Unify Wireshark. All right, there's the Chromecast and let's get my phone going. Switch over to that network. All right, it's connected and I can probably filter really quickly here for DHCP and find my phone's address, which would be right here, 140. I know that's the address that was assigned to my phone, but we'll go ahead and let it spill all the traffic. Now let's uh, do something by connecting to the TV behind me. Um, I don't know, it's a good thing to open. Probably YouTube, well, that'll make noise. Don't wanna do that. We'll just connect uh, Google Photos to it. And you can see the TV behind me. So turn it on Google Photos real quick here. And yeah, get the idea. Um, pull a picture up behind me. Hey, look, it's a picture of my Tesla. For those wondering, it's yep grab a photo, whatever, doesn't really matter. The traffic now, you can see the UDP traffic heading between these devices. So, all right, we're definitely learning something here. So 172.69.140 and 128, and 128 being the IP address there, we're seeing it sends traffic over UDP between these devices. So that's interesting. And when I move this, got another picture, another picture moving things across here. All right, we can watch this traffic. It's using different protocols, but you get the idea. We're able to sniff into this and, you know, figure out what's going on and if there's a problem, or in this case, it's working fine. When just out of curiosity, what is it actually sending? And of course, with all the amazing collection of IoT devices people love putting in their house or might be curious where those are going, you put them on a separate VLAN, you can now watch that connection as they're connected to that particular access point. Now, I had mentioned, and we'll close this without saving, what happens when you want to connect to something and you're doing it from your computer and you want to grab BR0. And let's add another twist to that. Let's go here, IF config, and look for the tunnel address because I'm actually VPN back to my house. So 192.168.69.2 is the tunnel address for the VPN that I'm using, which means that's the IP address that will be seen when I SSH into the device. All right, so let's go here and edit this again. Unify Wireshark, and this is the home address. Whoops. And we want to say host not 69.2, or we'd end up with that loop of constant data going back and forth. But I want to grab this and see what's going on on this access point I set up at home. Now, this is a use case that comes up quite a bit where we have to troubleshoot something from our office and the client is remote. A lot of consulting work we do like this it starts with what's going on and troubleshooting things remotely. If you have a good VPN that you can get in there, but you don't want to pull too much. So if you're doing this on a really active network, I also recommend adding a specific host you're looking for, like host and put the IP address because you can't exceed the amount of bandwidth between you and that remote client. So of note, but because there's not much going on at this moment, because I'm willing to bet there's no one home or no one awake this early uh, doing anything online, but there's still going to be some noise because I have devices at home that connect to the Wi-Fi. So let's go ahead and kick this off and show you how it can work remotely. And I can see things talking remotely that are attached to it. 
Same thing, we're starting to see all the traffic go back and forth. MDIS from 121, I bet that's a Google Chromecast. I feel pretty confident actually that it is. Yep, uh, Google Nest Mini. That's actually not a Google Nest. It's uh, something that my wife has plugged in. It's uh, one of the little Google, what do they call the Google Home? Home, I think is what that's called. Anyways, uh, she decided to connect that the other day. We left it on to play with it, and uh, the kids get a kick out of it. But you can start seeing all the things that this listening device is. I'm not a big IoT person, so there's actually not that much going on in my house. I have Chromecast, uh, and my wife had plugged in this because someone gave her one, which there's a whole different discussion of whether or not that should be there. I do have a Chromecast right here creating noise. But now you can see how you can dive into something that's remote and start gathering intel on it or you know, troubleshooting it, trying to understand what traffic and what's connected to it. Now, the final thing I'm gonna leave you with here is how to get Wireshark up and running on a Linux install like I'm doing here. Also, I don't have a tutorial how to do this in Windows because it's just not a big Windows user and it's pretty easy to do inside of Linux. And the first one is this. Super user do dpackage reconfigure Wireshark common. Put your password in. Put your password in right. Yes, it did ask if I was on drugs. Should non-super users be able to capture packets? Make sure you answer this to yes. All right, you're all set. Next thing that you need to do, chmod plus x user bin dump pcap. Doing this from your user with sudo, that means you're gonna add the executable permissions to the dump cap so it'll work. If not, you're gonna start Googling a bunch of errors and come back to learning that those two commands are the ones to get Wireshark working. I just wanna leave that in the video here for those of you that may be experiencing trouble with it. But that's all there is to doing this. I really love that they love that they left a TCP dump in here. It makes it, well, handy when you're doing network troubleshooting and Wi-Fi troubleshooting like we spend uh, some time doing, figuring out why something didn't connect or did connect but didn't get an address or connected and send something weird or just where are things going? That's always a big question everyone asks. Uh, I'll leave the commands typed out below so you don't have to try and copy and paste them off the YouTube screen here, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.